James Duval from Donnie Darko, and you're watching Cat TV. Zombies, oh my. Welcome to a special horror edition of Cat TV. I'm your host, Cat Sharp. And I'm your host, Jesse Evans Jenkins. Today we're going to talk about the world of horror and how it's not just for the Halloween season. But first, let's have a short break before discussing the philosophy behind the horror genre. We know what it's like to feel alone. I had no hope and I never, I didn't think that things would get better. I struggled a lot with um, thoughts of suicide myself. Speak up to anyone that you feel comfortable speaking to about those kind of issues. If you can get through those rough times, the good times are really good times. It might be bad now. There are a whole lot bigger and better things that are waiting for you down the road. It gets better. It does get better. I promise. It does get better. What up, I'm Will. Play the bass. We're a jazz group, but we play everything from Miles Davis to Tom Morello. Hi, I'm Madison. I play drums for the group. Not only do we play covers, but we also play original music. Hey, I'm Danny. I play piano. We've played at benefits, restaurants, and jazz clubs, and we're open to play anywhere. Hey, I'm Zach, and I play guitar. Check us out on Facebook for our schedule, booking contact, and music. The Capital University Rock Ensemble is in its seventh season, and it was founded by Dr. Mark Locke Stanford as kind of an alternative for the students who maybe didn't fit into our jazz combos, into big band, or into the choirs. So we're a fully functioning rock band. We can travel anywhere. We're singing everything from Jason Mraz to Grace Potter and the Nocturnals to Styx. So there's a little something for everyone. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. And welcome back to Cap TV. I'm here with my friend Alicia Ux, who has been a fan of horror all of her life and was the one that got that changed my opinion about the genre. Now, I've always appreciated classic horror, Hitchcock being, you know, one of my favorite directors. However, I was never much of a fan of the modern horror films until you came along. So I have to ask you, you know, what made you interested in horror to begin with? Um, just kind of hanging out with my grandfather when my parents were busy working. Uh, got to watch, watch a lot of things I wasn't really supposed to watch. <laughs> and that kind of uh, put it in for me to start getting into those films just way when I was little. So why do you think the horror genre exists? Um, really just for people to have a thing to be afraid of they can focus on. It's an escapism. They can be, it's like, oh yeah, look at you know, what's happening to them. They're in this horrible situation, but I'm safe at home. I mean, it's just um, a good thing for people to get lost in. Just try to avoid it. <laughs> yeah. Try to avoid Anyway, uh, so what it, so why do you think, okay, what, what attracts you to horror, I should say? Just the adventurism of it all, they can do whatever you want, you know, you can still root for the killer and, you know, not look like a bad person or, uh, you know, root for the monster being the bad guy for once and, uh, you know, it's all make-believe, you know. And that's just always been kind of fun to me, I think, and it attracts a lot of people to it. Um, so some people, like my mother, for example, are squeamish when it comes to horror movies. So how would you describe the appeal of horror movies to someone like that? Maybe it wouldn't appeal too much to that person. They'd be more into the psychological thriller, uh, Silence of the Lambs, uh, seven, frailty like that, maybe not so gory or anything like that, or maybe a ghost story. Or again, maybe the classics. <laughs> yeah, and so about gore, would you consider gore to be horror or? Gore is now very much a part of horror. It didn't used to be, except for films like really pushing it, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, the really gory 80s slashers. But now I think, yes, it's, um, it's definitely a more thing now because people are so desensitized from what they watch TV every day. Uh, just have to keep upping the volume to make it more acceptable and more pleasing to watch, I guess. It's weird to say. So we're talking about modern horror versus, like, we're talking <coughs> about modern horror, but how do you think horror has evolved since, like, from the classic from Hitchcock to now? Um, it's really, it's, it's different now. A um, lot more CGI, not a lot. People regurgitate a lot more things. There are a lot more remakes, not very more original ideas. And sadly, um, that's a lot of the films now, the directed DVD things. But there are a lot of ones that come out that people don't hear about that really redeem the genre. A little independent or uh, like Insidious. <laughs> Insidious was wonderful. The Conjuring was good. Yeah, it was. Um, Cabin in the Woods. Perfect, perfect so, example. 
What's your favorite horror movie right now? <coughs> uh, favorite for me? Um, probably the slashers or the zombies. Zombies are my favorite. Um, the icons, Pinhead, Freddy, all those. I, always, I don't know why. Always been a big draw for me. But uh, I, I like Freddy's cheesy one-liners. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we mentioned, you know, Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Hall Massacre. You've seen all these different types of kills, all these creative ways of killing. What would be your favorite kill? One of my all-time favorite kills would probably be in Jason X when they simulate a hologram to try to distract him with these two girls, and he gets them in sleeping bags and starts bashing them to death on each <laughs> other and everything around them, and it's just the most hilarious thing to just think that he, you know, that's what we've come down to. It's like, okay. Uh, so I heard you talking about how you didn't like so much like some of the remakes that you've seen in the movies nowadays. Um, what do you think of the television show remakes that they're kind of making, like Psycho's Bates Motel or Hannibal? Lecter's I think it's it gives a breath of fresh air. I like them a lot. I liked Hannibal, how it is. And Bates Motel was wonderful. I love American Horror Story, how it's throwing a lot of different concepts horror-wise in all in one big thing, or they're skipping like from Asylum to Coven. Now it's on witches. And I think that's that's great, and it covers a lot of different things. So, what would you be your favorite like TV horror show? Right now? Right now, well, it's over for the season, but Paranormal Witness on Sci-Fi, uh, Haunting on Discovery, and um, The Walking Dead, of course. I love The Walking Dead. Um, ones in the, uh, right now, that's probably uh, American Horror Story Coven. Those are probably about the main ones. Okay, and going back to the whole horror, going back to the movies now, um, you know, what, what do you think it would be the rush? Why do people watch horror? Like, you know, we mentioned before, uh, how we get our blood going, you get our adrenaline rush going when you're watching, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. It does get the adrenaline pumping. It gives you a reason to pull the girlfriend close. It's just, I don't know, people seem to like to be scared. It's a rush. Um, so what would you say is your least favorite horror movie <coughs> out of all of them? Because I know some of my friends really hate the Paranormal, paranormal Activity series, but... I do hate the shaky cam thing after a while because uh, yeah. they're doing a lot of that. Or the uh, somebody's filming it aspect of it. I don't, I don't feel there's as much of a story that way. I don't know. You're, you're just losing so much because you're trying to focus on the movement. Kind of like the Blair Witch type of effect from... Uh, right. Well, that was good. Not saying that wasn't, but they're trying to imitate it. And you're just losing a lot of the story with the shaky cameramanship. So would you say that's your least favorite part of the horror genre in general, the shaky camera? Now? <coughs> or is there like another aspect that you hate even more? Um, I, I do dislike, I'm not going to say hate, hate's a strong word. I do very much dislike remakes. I think it's a waste of talent and a waste of opportunity for them to do something a whole lot better. And uh, just be more creative, use your own original story. Just don't spit up something else that somebody's already done. It's, like I said, we might have mentioned Cabin in the Woods before. Cabin in the Woods breaks down the horror film. It, all the cliches, it plays on that and yeah. spits it right back out in their faces but explains it at the same time, makes fun of it. So. Uh, that would be a good horror film for any newcomers, Cabin in the Woods. Yes. What did you think of Scream? Because I know that was the first Scream horror movie I really watched. Scream was way before its time. Scream <laughs> was wonderful. Wes Craven was brilliant. In fact, it brought that, you know, you're making fun of the person that's, you know, being attacked. It's like, what's your favorite scary movie? And they're lurking in the closet. So instead of <laughs> running outside, you know, where it's safe, where it is, they run up the stairs and lock themselves in a bedroom. It's like, why? Common why, why? sense. <laughs> yeah, lack, you know, always Common sense, the, go the dumb away, heroine that runs upstairs instead of outside. So why do you think, like, the directors choose to make their characters in their movies be so dumb, like, to the fact where they run upstairs when they could run out the front Just door? Just so... Or, or? Uh, I, you know, I don't know what that is. Well, they want that kind of to go because you want the one character at the end that they're always focusing on. It has to pull out from the stupidity and kind of get your head together and be like, this is what I have to do to survive. But uh, it, it brings more focus to that. Okay. I think it's just fun for people to be like, no, stupid, run out there. <laughs> yeah, it's, you know. Well, this is all the time that we have for this segment. Sorry to cut you off there. Following a short break, we'll have a special treat for you, so stay tuned. Three main areas comprise career development, and those are career planning, job and internship search, and graduate and professional school application. Some of the most popular services are reviewing resumes, choosing and changing majors, and finding internships and jobs. You can find us on the second floor of Blackmore Library. Our drop-in hours are posted there, and you can make an appointment too. Most of our resources, including our contact information, are available on our website. We help you figure out what you want to do, and then we help you do it.
academic success is devoted to helping students be as academically successful here at Capital as they can be. We provide a wide range of academic support services, including math tutoring, science tutoring, writing center, and then subject area tutoring. We're easy to find. We're right here on the second floor of the library, and they can get more information by either calling us at 236-6327, emailing us at academicsuccess at capital.edu, or just simply going to our website at www.capital.edu forward slash academic success. Are you ready? Take your game to the next level with Capital University's Ultimate Disc Team. Have fun with great people while learning to compete at this ultimate sport. Come join us for Late Night Pickup every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 10 p.m. on Renner Lawn. All skill levels are welcome. Catch it with CU Disc. Welcome back. Earlier in the school year, Alicia and Kat took a trip to Indianapolis for a local horror hound convention where they met quite a few interesting characters and some celebrities. a costume builder, and I go to cons. This is my second um, horror con. I was here last year. I didn't costume. I got a feel for the, for the spirit of the con, and I came this year in costume, and this is my costume, a werewolf. So why do you do this? I do it for a hobby. I enjoy it. Um, I don't have to be paid for it. I also want to make costume building a mainstream business. When did you get interested in costume design? Probably over a year ago, uh, probably by uh, the fall of 2011 at Renaissance Fair, I saw some really cool costumes and that inspired me to do creature costumes like these. When did you start going to conventions? Um, actually last year, <laughs> I'm, I'm very new to the convention thing, um, last year in the spring I went to my first Comic Con. Uh, my aunt and uncle took me. They go every year, but they thought I'd be interested in the artwork side of it and the comic books and everything, which I was. So that was my first con, and I uh, discovered the Star Wars uh, Costuming Association. So I'm also in the in the Rebel Legion. So I'm an Ewok. I also have an Ewok costume. So I'm hooked. What reactions do you get when in costume? Um, it depends on where I'm at. Usually I've been to certain cons, people are like, oh, you're so cute, oh, you're adorable, or that's a really cool costume, man. Or um, I've scared a few kids. Kids are kind of iffy. They, they can get scared about anything, but um, usually it's a positive, so far it's been a positive reaction. They like it. Any advice for people interested in going to their first convention? Um, conventions, if you're going to get into the costuming part of conventions, um, and make new friends and get connections. Be careful about the information you hand out because there are some creepers at these cons that you might not recognize. They might be, you know, in disguise. Just be careful, be wise with the information. And um, also, if, um, if you don't like crowds and you want to get a feel for the place, you know, you can attend the, if the building's open, go in there a day before the con, walk around, get a feel for the place. Um, Study your, study your booklets that give you directions on where everything's at. And just overall, have fun. <laughs> Easy, boy! I said no! Down! Well, my name is uh, Stephen Bema, and I am an oil painter, and I'm here trying to get my work a little bit more known, uh, meet my fans, get to talk to them, 
and hopefully sell some stuff so I can make enough money to go to another show. How long have you been working these conventions? Uh, I started about seven years ago, but you know, like anything, it started off pretty small with just one or two shows a year, but now I'm up to doing 20, 25 shows a year. So it's almost become a full-time job. Now, do you have a job outside of this? I am self-employed graphic artist, and I do mostly commercial stuff during the day. And, you know, that pays the bills, and it's, you know, fine, but it's a lot more fun to paint cool pictures and then come and meet people. Any advice to any new con-goers? Like, somebody who hasn't been in a convention before, anything, any, any advice on to what to expect? Uh, well, you know what, if you're a first-time con-goer, just expect the unexpected. And keep your eyes open, because there's always stuff going on. You know, um, I see people come by and they say, yeah, this is my first convention, I don't know where to go first. Just take your time and look at everything. You know, is, is the dealers or artists or filmmakers that come here, you know, we appreciate it when people just want to just stop by and just ask, well, what are you doing here? You know, what is it that you're here for? It's not, I mean, it's nice to sell stuff and make money. And that I guess that's sort of the ultimate purpose is, you know, that we're kind of here for. But mm -hmm. just to be able to talk to people and have them look at your work and to see that people are enthused about it and are appreciative about what you're doing. Okay, so now I, I have to ask, obviously you're at a horror convention, so it is something that interests you. How did you get interested in horror to begin with? It's my dad's fault. When I was a little kid, he used to, uh, like on Saturday afternoon, sit me down and we'd watch uh, our local horror host, which was Sir Graves Gastly, would show all the old Universal Classic, you know, monster movies and say, oh, come on, Steve, Frankenstein's going to be on this afternoon. So I'd sit and watch it with him. So that was kind of our little thing. It's just Kim and I would go to, to the show to watch a horror movie or he'd take me, just me to the drive-in. Mm -hmm. So ever since I was, you know, probably five, six, seven, I've been watching this stuff. Obviously there are people that are not here that are not really into horror. Uh, for those that are not into it, can you describe what horror is about? Like, is, is it, it's not all just screaming and blood, guts and gore, you know? Why are people into horror, at least in your opinion? Well, I mean, obviously people are into it for different reasons and depending on what kind of genre that you're into. Me, I personally like kind of the old-fashioned gothic kind of things. I mean, it's the kind of books that I read. It's, the, you know, mostly the movies I watch. I, I'm not sure what exactly it is that draws people to that, but, I mean, there's a certain amount of escapism. They're great stories, you know, because you have the drama of it, the comedy of it, and then you have that supernatural, you know, thing that, well, this can't really happen, could it? And that was a great segment that you put together there. Can you tell me some of the people that you interviewed in that? Um, well, I interviewed uh, the uh, the, per the girl before that, uh, she, I just randomly saw her across the paths, and I was like, you know what, that was pretty cool, I'm gonna go ahead and interview her. Uh, the oil painter, Steven, I met at my very first convention, and um, I built a rapport, oh, sorry, we built a rapport with him every single time I was there to say hi, see how things are going, and I was like, you know what, I'll interview him and see what his opinion is about things. That sounds really awesome. Well, we'll be right back to talk about horror convention, guys. Thanks for watching Cat TV.
Are you tired of lugging your turntable around just so you can listen to your favorite music? You're in luck. Capital University's chapter of the Audio Engineering Society is converting your old vinyl, tapes, and more into digital formats that you can take with you wherever you go. We use professional level equipment to preserve the sound quality of your collection while turning it into a much more manageable size. So let the AES digitize your library. We'll promise it'll still sound just as good. Contact nlockwu at capital.edu for more information. This is James Duval from Donnie Darko, and you're watching Cat TV. And welcome back. Now that you have a taste of what a convention looks like, let's go into a little more detail. Now, Jesse, I hear that you have never been to a horror convention before? No, I have not never. Like, I've never been to a horror convention. I've always wanted to, but like, I can never find the time, and I'm not sure what I'd have to do to be in one, so. Well, you know, our guest Alicia and I, we were going to teach you about, we were going to teach you about conventions and pretty much how to prepare, so do you, shoot, shoot, do you have any questions for us? Um, well, yeah, one of my questions is how many horror conventions are out there and what would you say is the favorite one that you guys have been to personally? There are many, many horror conventions. There's Fangoria Weekend of Horrors, there's Monster Mania Convention in New Jersey, there's Horror Hound Weekend local here. Uh, we prefer the Horror Hound because it's close for us, it's cheaper, and uh, there's so many things to do, and you just never, never a bored moment. Yeah, there's it's there's three major locations for Horror Hound. There's in Indianapolis, and there's in Cincinnati, and they're trying to get a right here in Columbus. Actually, they're trying to get one established, and it's the biggest Midwest horror convention there is. So, you know, when a big name like Robert England comes in, it it's sold out immediately. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so, is there anything I could, should do to prepare for a con? Definitely keep a look on your websites. Make sure that uh, the guests you want to see are up to date. They're still going. Um, yeah. Make sure you have your tickets way ahead of time. Book your hotel. Uh, Book definitely your hotel. have cash on you yes. when you go. The cash is a big thing. People will get the ATMs in a minute. How much do they cost to get into a horror convention? For a day pass, it's normally anywhere $20 to $25. For a weekend pass, for horror hound ones, for about $45. Yeah. VIPs, $100, $150, depending, but you get a cotton t shirt, you get magazine. subscription to the magazine. I mean, it, you, all sorts of Bunch different of perks. Other little perks uh, VIP say. early admission to shows, viewings of the films, um, line access, you get to cut in line, you get, the, you know, get the signature for everybody else, things like that. Um, so what are some of the favorite people that you have met at the cons, like the actors or actresses? Uh, Robert Englund, yeah. Doug Bradley, Jeffrey Combs, Ken uh, Kurtzinger, Ken uh, Kurtzinger, Kane Hodder. <laughs> um, we, actually, uh, the convention package that she saw previously, we went to see it was the 10-year anniversary of Freddy vs. Jason. Really? And Robert Englund was here, and Ken Kurtzinger was here. Um, I guess... Uh, we, who else was there? Was like, oh goodness, they had people from The Walking Dead. Uh, they had people from the original Nightmare. They had uh, Heather Langenkamp. Ugh, there were so many other people. They had, I think, the whole trauma team there from uh, Traumaville Video. All sorts of different people. Um, so how far in advance should I prepare to go to one of these conventions? Anywhere from a six year? months to a year. Six months to a year. Uh, with this uh, con coming up here in March is uh, booked uh, probably a year in advance. Yeah, we tried booking. We tried booking our hotel about I don't know a couple months ago, and it was already sold out. Sold out. Well, and the is, tickets just yes. recently were all purchased. So, um, so what should I expect to see or experience at a convention? Expect anything. Uh, anything. Anything. Are people running around cosplaying? Uh, people doing live action zombie chases? Uh, people being victims? What have you? Uh, there's uh, there was a mask festival at the last one we went to. Mm -hmm. uh, horror film screenings. We had water park access. The one Coco Key. You have the convention chicks that wear practically nothing. And go around <laughs> with body paint. Just about anything. Flying projectiles, rubber bands. <laughs> <laughs> Just duck. You know. <laughs> Um, so hypothetically speaking, I'm now at the hotel and I'm ready for this convention. Where should be the first place that I go? Check-in desk almost immediately. Make sure you got your ticket ahead of time, get your map, go check around the hotel, make sure where everything's at, where the people that you want to see are signing, where the tables are, so you're not walking around in a confused stupor. Uh, it can get crowded. Um, so I see some interesting things on display here. Um, do you care to explain what some of these objects are? Well, uh... Take your pick. What do you want to start first with? <laughs> We've got uh, Freddy's glove. Here's a prop replica from uh, 
Nightmare 3 <coughs> screen used on top of one of the Hellraiser puzzle box props. You can one here pick is this one up right here. Signed by almost the complete cast. Uh, the only one I missed was Nika, which was uh, Chatterer. Chad Chatterer. Um, but if you look on the cube itself, um, I have, if I look here, you got Doug Bradley, Pinhead himself. Uh, on top here, I have Claire Higgins, who played Julia in the first two. Um, here, uh, customized, even though you can't really see it very well, you have Ashley Lawrence. Um, and then I have Simon, who played Butterball. And I believe... And Barbie Wild. Oh, and Barbie, who, right here, who... Played um, female. Who played the female Cenobite in the first one. And Dr. Decker's mask from Nightbreed, prop replica. Another good cult monster film, if you're interested in fantasy. The monsters are the good guys. Yeah, the monsters are actually the good guys, and it portrays us as the monsters. Um, so who attends these horror conventions other than like the horror fans out there? I've seen little kids with their parents. I've seen grandmas and grandpas. Uh, I've seen sci-fi geeks. I've seen everything you could possibly think of. Uh, people that actually weren't going to attend there in the first place were there for something else and got kind of sucked in seeing what we were doing, kind of got curious. So it kind of fell in, so to speak. So I've seen just about everyone. Um, so would you say it contains any semi-larities to the Comic-Con? Uh, in a lot of ways. It, um, it does cover some sci-fi, but I mean, everybody's very accepting. They're not going to be, oh, you like that? That's stupid. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, it's a place where people like that, like minds, can have fun and get Everyone together. has a similar interest. That's why, that's why they go to a horror convention to begin with. And, you know, some of my prized possessions are these right here, autographs. Um, you can get them anywhere from 20 bucks to 50, depending on, not the actor, but the agent, depending on how popular said actor mm -hmm. is. Um, uh, my very first one I ended up getting is Doug Bradley. Uh, he played Pinhead really? in uh, the first eight, not the remake, the first eight. Um, then we have Julia Higgins, who played Claire Higgins. Uh, Claire, who played Higgins. Julia? Claire Higgins, who played Julia, sorry. Um, see you in hell. Uh, can you see that? There you um, go. I heard that you also have. Robert England and one of the actors that plays Jason's signatures? Too. Yes, uh, at the actual convention itself, I think we mentioned before, it was the 10 year anniversary of Freddy vs. Jason. Yes. And um, had uh, Ken Kurtzinger, who played Jason. And then the man himself, Freddy Krueger. I don't um, have the autograph, headshot, sleep kills, <laughs> unless you're an insomniac, but that's beside the point. Um, well, I hate to cut you off, but this is all the time that we have for today. We hope that you learned a thing or two about the world of horror during our show. And one last bit of advice, the uh, best thing to do if you're interested in going to a convention is research. You want to find what you like, know who you plan to see prior, and mainly just have fun. You can always go in with a plan, but be open-minded. Uh, it's a perfect time to make new friends with similar interests, and it's also an awesome opportunity to make you know, professional business networking. So, you know, thank you for joining us today at CAP TV. I'm Cat Shark. And I'm Jesse. I'm Have a great evening. It's